Okay, so on Thursday night, we lost 1-0 to Barcelona and it was just, it wasn't a very entertaining game uh, at all. But it was it was one of those games where Real Madrid struggled to beat a low block and Barcelona sat back, which is something you don't expect Barcelona to do and I don't think the, 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 the coaching staff expected them to do. I don't think Barcelona expected them to do that as well, but... At the end of the day, that it's about adapting situations, and we did not adapt to that situation. And um, yeah, it ended one nil in a game where I think Barcelona could have had more. They had better chances than us, uh, despite us having all of the ball. And and Barcelona took away three, uh, well, not three points, a win, uh, an aggregate score, which they'll be very very pleased about. You know, without their key players, but it was. It was it, it hurt a lot more because of the fact that they didn't have those key players. They didn't have Lewandowski. They didn't have Dembele. They didn't have Pedri. They didn't have Christensen. And in in a couple of weeks' time, when we play them in the second leg or in in La Liga, they're gonna have those players back. And then you're yes, suddenly saying, well, those chances where Kessie hits uh, hits Ansu Fati and it just goes out, or the the one where Rafinha hits it across the box and and Ferran Torres um, could have managed to reach it. Those chances go, get put away if if Pedri, if Lewandowski, and and others are back in in those games, and that that's what I'm that's what I'm really really unhappy about the fact that we couldn't capitalize on Barcelona's weaknesses here, and you know we couldn't go back to the Camp Nou with with a really significant advantage where Barcelona were going to have to score maybe three or four to to uh, to advance, but. It's it's really disappointing in that aspect, and and in another aspect, you know, Barcelona were wounded before this game. They lo- they had lost to Manchester United two one, um, they had lost to Al Maria two pretty bad performances from Barcelona, and they were they were hurt. They weren't they weren't in best of form, and we could really dealt them a knockout punch there, and yet we've just given them free motivation to go ahead and beat Valencia today. I think they'll go ahead and simply beat Valencia today. And then, you know, further on, you've got Athletic Club for Barcelona and then you've got us and you've got some difficult games coming up, but we've just given them some free motivation to to go ahead and just finish off La Liga, which I really didn't want us to do. I really wanted us to just hurt Barcelona, but we didn't do that. So what are your thoughts on the result, on, on, you know, your thoughts coming up into the game and, you know, your reaction on the result? Yeah, well, um, like you said, it's a bit disappointing because we did not take advantage of the of the opportunity when they were down. They lost their last two matches. They weren't playing too well. You know, uh, we had the opportunities because some of the players they had were injured. And of course, you know, we just didn't play well at all after the first 10 minutes. We had a good start in the game. Um, however, I don't think that we uh, did enough to, to win the game. And of course, at the end of the day, um, despite us having more of the ball, they deserve to win, in my opinion. Um, we didn't like have any clear, clear cut chances. Um, of course, the um, of course um, the team didn't really penetrate Barcelona. They didn't have any um, intensity in the final third in terms of their chance creation and looking to get opportunities. You know, um, I think you know that should have been rectified using the bench. You know, um, but all in all. It's a field. It's a field of match, not because you played poorly, but because of what it means. Like you said, Barcelona um, are now close to winning the league. If if you look at it, um, despite the point we got last week, you know, and of course that's not what we needed. You know, if we wanted to um, to fight till the end, that's definitely not what we needed. And of course we have to just keep trying our best in the league. And if you look at it, um, the cup is actually something we needed to win. In my opinion, we haven't won it since 2013, 2014. Of course, um, the league is looking more and more difficult. Um, the Champions League is always unpredictable. So at least um, Ancelotti um, might just be looking at the cup um, as a way to win a trophy um, after the other Super Cups that he won. But I must also say that the difficult thing um, that I was looking at is... It's the way uh, we played, in my opinion, that's the biggest difficulty, you know, because, of course, we are just so inconsistent. Uh, I feel that like you never know what you're going to get. You know, um, sometimes we play well, sometimes we 
We just isn't at all best, and that's a bit disappointing in my opinion because we should try for a bit more consistency. I think maybe um, we lacked a bit of squad depth to play consistent, to play consistent matches for the entire season, but there was substitutions on the bench to enhance our performance in the classic on Thursday, and we just didn't use it. So I think that's the disappointing part for me, in my opinion. Yeah, and I've got we've got to talk about Ancelotti because I have no doubt in my mind that this loss, these losses against Barcelona in the, in the recent times, they've come down to Ancelotti because Xavi, Xavi, he's he's, he's made reactive um, changes to to our our strengths. He made some really good changes, obviously. And the one that he keeps doing um, against us, and he did it against United. And we worked less against United with Rashford, but. Keep putting Araujo on the right hand side, and it keeps pocketing Vinicius Junior. And it's been five classicos now. Xavi's been in charge. None of them at Camp Nou, and um, Xavi has won three out of uh, out of the five. That is really bad record. That is a horrible record to have. You know, the first one um, in the Super Copa uh, last year where we won three two. We we really it was it was a even match. It wasn't really you know a fantastic performance from us. It was three two in the end uh, in extra time for them to score that goal, and then the the straight after the the four nil we got totally humiliated uh, in that game. Completely outplayed, completely outdone by Barcelona, but we gave the excuse that Benzema wasn't there, um, and we believed that well that's that's not going to happen often. Uh, the next one after that, 3-1, the start of this season, um, they didn't have Araujo and that really did show in that game they, defensively, they didn't look solid. However, we didn't look that solid defensively either. Barcelona had chances in that game to, to definitely pull level with us and there was a dubious um, dubious uh, decision for the, for, the, um, for the last penalty which really did finish off the game. And then... The 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 Super Copa loss this uh, most recent we we got humiliated in a different way we just completely it was just a just a complete bossing performance for Barcelona where they just said you're not that guy no you're not that guy Real Madrid because it was that type of performance where we just couldn't get the ball they every time we got the ball we lost it straight away and Barcelona just looked real clinical with every chance they got and this is a different type of humiliation that we've experienced on Thursday night where we just couldn't create anything and I have no doubt that all three of those losses against Barcelona were Ancelotti's fault. He didn't react to Araujo uh, against Vinicius Jr. Xavi reacted in a, in a fantastic way and a really smart way um, by putting Araujo against Vinicius Jr. But then it's Ancelotti's job to to find a way to, to react to that and find a, find a solution to that. He hasn't done that. He hasn't done that and that's that's the plain and simple of it. He didn't react to that you know it's his job to get Vinicius scoring opportunities and he hasn't done that he's just opportunity to find find these uh, opportunity find these low blocks and try and pick you know find systems where we can pick apart those low blocks but we haven't done that his his opportunity to to select a, a dynamic midfield and get at Barcelona but we didn't do that we selected Cruz and Modric again and these games is why why we will never win La Liga with Ancelotti in charge with this Barcelona team. Last season, it wasn't a case of uh, we we were just too good for the rest of the league. Well, that wasn't the case. It was just no one else was there to challenge us. We we weren't exceptional last season in the league. And, you know, Barcelona was just even, they were just horrible last season. And that's, that's, that's been, you know, that did bring an era of complacency about us. I mean, what are your thoughts on Ancelotti and how he's reacted? Because one, the most concerning thing is he found that performance good. He said we have to repeat that about uh, camp, at the Camp Nou. I, I, I mean, I've got no words. Zero shots on target says everything about it. Barcelona had the better chances despite them being packed to 10 men in the box for the, most of the game. That, that really does speak volumes. So what are your thoughts on Ancelotti's decisions now and in other classes? Oh, yeah, well, let me, uh, let me um, start by saying that um, I remember last year, I'm not too sure if you remember, but I did tell you that, yes, we are winning the league, but of course, Barcelona will be back someday. You know, and of course, um, these um, losses in La Liga or whatever, it's not going to um, save us for long. And 
you know what's happening, you know. Um, we are on the similar amount of points from last season. And of course, we are behind um, in the league because Barcelona, I think, have 19 to 20 more. Okay, because which shows that we didn't take like much of a step up in terms of all the um, consistency again, you know, um, when we should have taken, taken advantage of it. But in relation to the classical um, performance, um, again, like you said, you know, um, if we play like we do again, um, on in the camp here, we're not going to win because, of course, Barcelona would be um, expected to do much better um, in the camp here. So um, that's that's my main takeaway from that. And of course, I think, um, like I said, I think one thing he didn't do was I didn't think he wanted to take too many chances. See that there's a second leg, you know. Um, I think he um, could have bring on Ceballos and Asensio. He should have bring on other players a bit sooner. He didn't because, uh, in my opinion, I think he was waiting on that second leg. You know, to take more chances going forward. So I think that's my main takeaway from that. But he should have at least done a bit more, you know, just to ensure that we do better in the game, in my opinion. Yeah, and to expect that we we come back. Obviously, there is obviously that 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 thing where we where we, we it's over. It's not over until the end. And obviously, that is that is still applies here. But there was you can you can compare this performance. And it's just not going to happen at Camp Nou, I don't think. We don't have Vinicius at Camp Nou. And, you know, some would say that benefits us based on the performance um, on Thursday. But No, um, I think we would have Vinicius. What happens is um, all of the yellow cards would be cancelled um, in the semi-final. So we'd have Vinicius oh, in the okay. second legs. Okay, that's fine. That's fine then. Um, yeah, so the, we will have Vinicius. Um, but like I said, some would say that it probably benefits us without Vinicius. I mean... Let's talk about Vinicius because he got plain and simple of it. He got pocketed by Araujo. It, it wasn't like a, a pocketed performance where where they just he just couldn't get past Araujo. But every time he went near Araujo, Araujo just pushed him over or or just shoved him or kicked him, and you know it got into Vinicius's head. And realistically, he should have got a yellow more than a yellow for the for the the young sort of thing where you know he, he choked him basically. Um, he got into, he kept getting to, into scraps and uh, with you know, with the likes of Gavi, and at the end of the day, this this he they got into his head. They got into his head, and now now teams can look at Vinicius and say he's easy to 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 he he loses his temper very easily. You, it's it's certainly something that we've got to address some somehow. And in terms of his playing, how he played. What's the point of persisting with him on the left? I've I've spoken about this before. What's the point of persisting on the le- with him on the left if he's just not working? If it's just not working, why you keep on per- persisting? It's not like we've got bad left wing options as well. We've got Rodrigo on the left who can play on the left. We've got Benzema who always drifts to the left. Put him on the right. Try him on the right. What's wrong with trying him on the right? I I don't think he's ever been tried on the right at Real Madrid. I cannot remember a single moment. I don't understand why he can't try try him on the right. Because, you know, that offers us something completely different. You know, sometimes he just goes and gets to the byline and he tries to put a cross in with his left, but it's not very accurate. Try that on the right. You try that on the right and he gets an old, an old crossing opportunity with his right foot. What's wrong with that? Like, I don't understand what's wrong with that. And it, it's certainly, you know, you need Vinicius to be on top form and he's getting pocketed by Araujo. Try something different. It's not working. So what are your thoughts on Vinicius Jr.? Yeah, so um, I think um, one thing um, that um, a solution other than sending him on the other side, which I think is a good solution, you know, um, just you know because he's passing on most full backs, he can just push past them and send send a low ball, then he can just chip one and he can he can give a cutback. So I think that's a good that's a good um, way to get to get past it. I think um, we can also uh, well, I saw an interesting article from managing Richard saying that when Kamavinga started playing left back, when the CS had more opportunities to be more impactful on the board. So I think um, I still believe I know that of course it seems like I'm making excuses for him um, for the entire season in these situations, but I think. Um, the guy does need, of course, a bit more support and options. Of course, when he's, especially when we know he's playing against these tough fullbacks, um, we don't have like the biggest of uh, attacking left backs. And then he started making better 
um, attacking movements in the last few games, and you can see how it um, helped Vinicius to do much better. You know, um, uh, Vinicius had a difficult game against Torres, and then of course, um, in the second time um, in other matches, I think Mendy started making more runs, and I think it helped Vinicius play much better. You know, so in my opinion. I think the best thing to do for me is just have these guys, you know, making making diagonal movements into the box, um, in um, down the byline. You know, you can maybe have Sabayas play left centre midfield. He can go up and support Vinicius. Um, have that you go playing and behind the striker, he's going to move move over there and support Vinicius. Have your left back move forward. He's going to go over there and support him. So I think um, there, are many, there are many options, you know, and, but of course, if it's not working, you can also put them on the other side. Um, because, of course, as a winger, I'm sure you are also taught the first thing before cutting, and I'm sure it's getting to the byline and putting in a ball into the box. That's the first thing that I think that a winger should know what to do because most wingers should have at least a bit of speed, and he does. And, I think that's something that we should definitely try. You know, even if it's just on that side, you know, just to get a few touches and um, just to build back up his confidence. But that's okay, we can do that. There's solutions to it, and of course, it's a bit disappointing that that actuality isn't really utilizing it as much as possible. You know, so um, that's something that we should look out for in the future, especially in my opinion. Yeah, uh, let's talk about those those fullbacks. Like you, like you said, when Kamavinga's playing, Vinicius gets more opportunities. And the point of that is, Kamavinga occupies the wide left, and you don't want Vinicius in those positions because Vinicius will try and dribble through all of them, and it's just not possible. You can't dribble through like three or four that just keep coming, keep coming, and to to tackle him, you just can't do that. So you need a a wide left back, and this is something which we've talked about so long for so so long. And it's just, it's really annoying because Camavinga is the only one in our team that can do that. Maybe Fran, Fran Garcia next season can do that. But for now, Camavinga is the only player who can who can do that. And you don't want him in these type of games at left like you want him in the midfield. And I know he'd made a costly mistake in this game. But apart from that, I thought for Camavinga was quite good. Same thing on the right-hand side. Carvajal, he just kept firing crosses for the, for the sake of it. None of them were accurate. I don't remember a single cross that, that Carvajal made that made actual connection with any of our players in the middle. And, you know, he, he keeps thinking... I, th- I think he must be stuck in 2017 because he thinks there's prime Ronaldo in the box because there clearly is no one there to head the ball. Ben, the only one who can he can probably head the ball in that in that, in that that starting eleven is is Karim Benzema. And Benzema doesn't occupy the, the, the box spaces. So... You know, Carvajal keeps firing in the crosses for absolutely no reason. I mean, that's the position where we need a better technical fullback who, you know, is more comfortable on the ball, who wants to take on a a player just to, you know, wait for those wait for those runs to be made in the box. Carvajal can't do that, and you, I, I, it hurts me so much when they say Cancelo could have come because. You know, Cancelo, he would have been so perfect in this game. And we've said this so many times, he would have been so perfect in the in the, in the the Supercopa. He would have been so perfect in a lot of La Liga games. And yet we just refuse because we've got Carvajal. That is, that that really does pain me. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And you know, I can, I, can, I can understand if you have nothing on your sending in curses, but why wait so long to bring on Archegas? He won, he won some headers when he came on. Um, we should have put them on like maybe like ten, fifteen minutes earlier because I'm sure I'm sure they were seeing most of our chances were coming from us not chances but most of the opportunities to get the ball into the box was just by sending it to Sam send it in. You know, um, of course if you keep sending the ball up in the air, um they have dominant um, guys in the air and it's not gonna work. You should have sent on Alvaro Rodriguez a lot earlier. And when he came on, I think he won two headers. Um, and yeah, he won two headers, and not just two headers against anyone, against um, against um, Ronald and Kunde, um, and they are both in the air, you know. Um, so we should have just sent them on in the air. So that's why I said, in my opinion, the game was lost. Um, because I didn't think we um, 
just trying to make um, solutions to turn the game on the side of my opinion. I think, yeah, on a lot, a lot of occasions we have played poorly, but I'm sure that he normally makes the best decisions to at least um, come away with the draw or at least play better. I don't think he did, he did, he did that on today. And like I said, maybe um, he was maybe being a bit cautious because he knew that maybe there's a second leg like, to save our skins. But however, um, at least, you know, make it a bit easier for us in the second leg because it isn't at uh, Santiago Bernabeu. And of course, the second leg doesn't always go your way. So um, that's a bit disappointing in my opinion. And um, I think that we should um, definitely take steps forward in order to try to fix that solution in my opinion. Yeah, um, I mean, let's move on to the strikers because Benzema, again, uh, it's been poor performance after poor performance recently. And to be honest, not just recently, this whole season he's been kind of off of it. He's been really, he's been really, like, he's had that lack of sharpness in front of goal. He's, his link up looks just off. He's not able to link up with Rodrigo and Benzo and Vinicius as well. And it's just, it's, it's a bit confusing, but it's two performances now where he's just not been there where when his team needs him. And, you know, this performance then against Atletico, I think personally, if you look at that and you say you've got, you bring Alvaro Rodriguez in like the 80th minute, how are you doing that? How, especially the impact Alvaro came on with against Atletico Madrid, surely you look at Benzema and you say he's not, he's not linking up very well and he's not getting in the box. So what is he bringing that with that much in that game? You've got to bring on Alvaro Rodriguez much sooner. Not for Benzema, I would, I would say, but you've got to just bring him on just to have that aerial presence in the box. And he didn't do that. And it's, it is annoying because, like you said, we were just crossing. We were just crossing for fun. And Alvaro Rodriguez, at that point, was the only one who would get in the box and just purely head the ball. So what are your thoughts on Benzema's performances? Yeah, it's, it's a bit concerning, you know, um, how he's playing at the moment. You know, of course, you know, um, I'm not too sure if he if he is at 100 percent. Um, Ancelotti said um, against the Atletico game that he had a he wasn't at 100 percent. I think mentally he said I'm not I'm not too sure the specific quote, but he said Benzema isn't at 100 um, percent for that game. You know, mentally he didn't have the best of matches, and of course, you know. Um, when you look at it, um, I was expecting maybe he would have um, been back to his best way at Classico because, of course, um, normally uh, for the big matches, you know, normally he turns up, you know, um, but this time, you know, it's, it seems like it's a pattern the season. He's had a bit of a stop on the start season, in my opinion, you know, and of course, um, to be honest, if I'm being honest with you, I'm not upset. I'm not even upset about it. I'm just hoping that, you know, I'm just honestly hoping that, you know, we um, just let others have the opportunity, in my opinion. Because sometimes I've learned that it, it, it doesn't always help, you know, to wait on players to at least play their way back and forth. Of course, it's Benzema and he's one of the best, but of course, at least just for a couple of league matches, you know, just just give someone else opportunity to start um, in the... Give someone else opportunity to start in the middle. Um, let them come on if, if it's anything, you know. Because of course, at, at the stage, you know, it's better, you know, that we have others who can, you know, at least maybe give a hundred percent. In my opinion, he's not doing poorly, and of course, I'm not blaming him, you know. Um, but of course, at this time, it's just better just to give, like that, just say that he gets an opportunity um, in the in maybe some more matches, you know, just uh, so Ben Smart can find some time. Uh, maybe find back some fitness, you know, find back his physical condition, you know, at least try to get back close to where he was last season. Because there have been signs of him coming back to his best, but um, that's been um, hampered by, but let's just see, an injury or some niggle. Um, and it's a bit disappointing, but it's something that we should have expected, you know, it's not Benzema's fault. He's playing a lot of matches, he's getting older, and I think we should have done more. Um, now we have Rodriguez, uh, who can take a bit of um, load off of him, and he came in at the best possible time because Ancelotti he clearly doesn't trust us, and and that's not not just Ancelotti but all of the fan base doesn't trust him. So I think Rodriguez um, came in at the best possible time to at least give Benzema some days off, um, or 
or at least some time on the bench you know for them to at least focus on at least getting back to 100% for the Champions League or if or if um, or if it's still there at least he can be back for 100% for the last few games of La Liga if we're still in the title the title matches yeah um, let's 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 talk about the Betis game then let's move on and I think we can still make some points on Barcelona here but um, let's move on to the Betis game and we know Betis is a good side. We know that they're a quality side with quality players. Um, unfortunately, Nabil Fakir won't be playing this game uh, for Betis because he's he's recently picked up a, an ACL injury, which is horrible for him. And wish to, which wish a speedy recovery to him because you know for a, such a talented player, uh, having having an ACL injury is just it's it's a shame, isn't it? And um, so um, speedy recovery to Nabil Fakir. But you know they've still got weapons other than Fakir. You've got you've got the uh, Sergio uh, Canales in this game, who is every time he plays against Real Madrid, I'm really impressed with him because he's he's just that type of he's elegant on the ball, he's really good on the ball, his technical ability is very nice, and he's hard working as well. So, you know, what do you think that Betis can pose us in terms of threat? Yeah, um, I think um, they started the season well. Um, of course, they feel a little bit, but that doesn't take away from um, the impressive what they're doing. You know. Um, and how difficult of an opponent they always are for Madrid. Um, let's not forget that um, we won um, at the Bernabeu for the first time against them since 2017, um, earlier this season. Um, let's not forget when we won against them in 2017, we took a late search in Moscow to um, give us the win. And we won 1-0 um, at their stadium the last time we won their last season. And it was a Carvajal goal um, that it took, you know, um, to, to win the game, you know, um, not a late goal, but uh, a goal like um, midway through the second half. They're a difficult team to score against when we play against them. They always work hard. Um, they are tight um, in defence. You know, um, that's why I think a lot of the reports are saying that we are going for um, camping and surprise in midfield. Um, I think which is needed because true many isn't that is best as well. You know, so I think um, if we play players. We, isn't at our job percent it's going to cause us some problems. Um, I think Tony Kuz, um would be important as well because they are an effective person side in my opinion. So I think um, having Kuz with Tobias and Kamavinka would help us a lot in my opinion because Kuz is a good person and of course when he's playing with these guys as a number six or a number eight or in a pivot, it's important that he has um, like guys like Tobias and Kamavinga. Um, I'm, really, I'm really hoping that Tobias and Kamavinga can do well in this game um, because, of course, I think when Tobias and Kamavinga play in midfield, we have been really good, in my opinion. And when um, Tobias and Kamavinga gives you the energy, it makes it easier for guys like Venezia, Hassan, Valverde and uh, Trigo to make a bigger impact. You know, um, so I think um, there's a lot of... Um, the Barcelona game showed that there's a lot of experiments or there's a lot of of um, things that we did well last season that um, the magic of it is starting to fade away. And now it's up actually to find solutions to that, in my opinion. And there are solutions. You know, the solutions is there. Um, it's up to him to take advantage of it, to use it, and to, and to you know, um, use the best tools for La Liga matches um, from the start. And not always depend on substitutions. I would like him to pick the best possible starting eleven for this game, like he didn't associate that much despite the draw. Uh, when we dominated that game from start to finish, uh, I would like to see him make the best possible decision starting from today um, in this match. Yeah, and let's talk about some of the decisions that you can make. Courtois in goal, um, yeah, standard. Lunin's not available, so I, I presume you've gone for Courtois as well. Yeah, yeah, Courtois definitely. I don't think um, Lutheran would have played even if he was available. So I think, um, all that's the best in the season. So let's see. Yeah. Um, then let's move on to the right back. And um, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult one. I, I think it's it's a whole rest week next week, isn't it? And there's no midweek games next week. No, no. Then we have an entire seven days until we face the Spaniel. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of a rest week. So I think that should factor into our starting eleven. Um, I've gone for Danny Carvajal right back. Um, I think Lucas Vasquez could play this game though. So what? Who have you gone for right back? Um, no, I'm going 
going to gather Haaland for the back. Um, Lucas Vasquez is the time he came on, I think, the last week um, in the last match uh, when we were ch- um, I can't remember the score for that game. I think we were chasing the game. And he, oh, I think we were behind. Yes, we were behind against Atletico when mm-hmm. he came on for Cavajal. Let's be honest, we don't have much choices at this time who we can um, have on the pitch, unfortunately, due to um, injuries um, to Alaba and Mendy. So, of course, the other guys have to move to left back, which means that um, Cavajal is the only starting option in that position when you consider the fact that other guys will be moving to other positions. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the centre backs. And I think Militao and Rudiger, they've, they're starting to form up a really good par- partnership, to be honest. Um, recently, that Barcelona game, as much as Militao got the own goal, he went down his own, his own goal. I don't think it was his fault, ultimately. Um, he's been, he, apart from that, he was pretty good in that game. I think they were both pretty good in that game, considering it was basically them two defending the whole time, just them two. And I think them two together, they're they're forming up a really good partnership. You know, we we were doubting it at, at points. You know, especially in that January period, we were really doubting whether those two could play together. But recently, they they look like they can thrive in absolute chaos. They look fantastic, um, together. And yeah, I think these two together, I think they they can do well. So who have you gone for as the centre backs? Yeah, I think um, I think these are the two best options. I'm just gonna say I'll put Nacho at left back um, immediately because he was another option for the right back position, but he has no choice now but to play left back because I think um, I would like to see um, I'll go to the midfield options after, but I would like to see him, you know, um, play left back. He's actually quite good going forward um, over the past few weeks, in my opinion. He's been one of our best defenders. And I must say, um, despite the classical score, I must say, when I saw the last 10 to 15 minutes of the game, I think nothing was, was going to pass. I'm going to tell one of the guys, in my opinion, they, um, they were sometimes one of the only two guys back. And when Barcelona tried to play forward, they would always win it. And I think their position you know, is quite good. I think they're taking steps together as a partnership. Uh, I think it's bad news for Alaba, but I'm sure we're going to get to that in the following weeks. Um, but I think for now, they, they are our centre back there. And uh, unfortunately, um, we don't have much options. But the good news is that, um, like you said, we have seven days after this game, you know, just to, you know, um, get some guys back. You know, many I think might be coming back, but let's just hopefully there's no injuries in this game for these two guys because I would like to see them continue um, the following weeks as well to build on their partnership. Yeah, I agree. Nacho, uh, left back. And let's move on to that midfield. And yeah, I think it's done for Modric and Cruz, to be honest. I think it's one or the other at this point. Uh, and I think it is one of them, no no doubt. And I think in this game, for me, I would go for Tony Cruz. Uh, I th- like you said, they are a good pressing team. And I think Modric has been playing quite a few games. He's suspended anyway, um, so it has to be Cruz in this game. And um, yeah, he's he's we. He, this is a game where we need to keep control and make sure that we don't lose control. So for me, Cruz goes in that midfield and I think Ceballos deserved to play against Barcelona, but he didn't, which was bad decision in my opinion from Carlo Ancelotti in those games where in that, in that midfield where he could have just wriggled through and, you know, lost a few defenders. I think he would have been really valuable, but we didn't play him. And then obviously Camavinga, there's something wrong with Drew Many, I, I, I hope he gets a few minutes here, maybe half an hour here, but I think uh, for me though that would be the three to 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 go to for this match. Yeah, for me as well. I think um, Tony Cruz would be important um, because of course he isn't like he isn't the best tracker in the world in terms of tracking back, but he's done better this season. And of course, um, I think if we play with Sabayas and Kamavenga, these are good guys who can um, put in a lot of energy for them, make it easy for them just to fill up these little spaces that is missing, you know, in transition. So I think um, having him there would definitely benefit us. Um, so I would like, it was either for me, Sabayos or Balverde, in my opinion. But um, I've gone for Sabayos. I think he didn't deserve to get no minutes in the classical one. I think he he deserves the start, in my opinion. it's In my opinion, this isn't a sympathy for him, but it's a least Sancho that he can't do. Uh, I would just like to see Sabayos get more minutes um, from the start 
month. Um, it seemed that, you know, Ancelotti was going that way. But however, over the past few weeks, I think he, he has turned and he has not turned on the player, but I mean, he has gone back to, you know, going back to the um, other guys who wasn't better than Sobias over the past month, which is a bit confusing because I think Sobias would have definitely um, helped their performance um, in the past few matches that we are struggling in. So I think Sobias deserves the start and I hope that he does well to show um, Ancelotti um, how much he deserves um, more minutes from the start and that he deserves this new contract. He needs to show the ball that which he has, but I think that they need to see it again. Yeah, 100%. So let's move on to that that front three. And um, I believe Rodrigo is back for this game. Uh, he was back in midweek, which made a speedy recovery. Um, so for me, the front three, I think, I'm going to make a bold statement here, I think you drop into my head. I think you've got to you've got to give Falvaro the minutes. I think he, he deserves the minutes and I think it poses a different problem to Betis um, that they normally wouldn't have against Real Madrid, which is an aerial presence in the box. You've, you've, Benzema's been struggling to score open play goals, you know, apart from that one game against Liverpool. He's been really struggling to score open, open, open play goals. And I think um, he this in this game. I think it's a good game to to, to try it, and uh, that that would open up some space for Rodrigo in the in in that ten position as well, which I think would really really suit him. You know, just to put Alvaro in the box, occupy the two defenders, and then that opens up some space uh, just in front of the in front of the just in front of the defenders for Rodrigo to just pick some pick some passes, pick so just link up and do well. So for me, that would be the front three. Uh, who, what have you gone for in that front three? Um, for me, um, for me, I'm, I'm still sticking with Benzema for this game. Um, of course, um, we said a lot that maybe he deserves an opportunity just to, you know, to just maybe have some time off. You know, of course, you know, um, but I think I'll, I'll, he should be coming on a bit earlier. You know, um, I think the... 10 minutes cameos, I think he's better than that now. Um, he should not. So I think he should at least have like half an hour, 35 minutes. But I will still go with Benzema for this one. You know, um, and then Vinicius and Etrigo. But I think um, with Sabayos back um, and Kamavinga given the energy in midfield and Etrigo um, can take up most of the load in terms of um, linking up play. I think he can just focus and be in high up the pitch if you have Etrigo there. Um, and you have energetic midfielders who can, who can give you where to give you diagonal movement, I think it's going to make it a lot easier for Benzema. I think if you start with um, with um, Kuz and Matric, um, there isn't like um, the diagonal um, movements. If you have Elvedi out wide, he's not going to come inside like Lechigo or Link up play. It's more pressure on Benzema. But I think if you have Lechigo and you have these guys like Sabayas and Kamavinga, and of course, with the Sias and the Chico, they all got to move about the pitch link up well because Sabayos, Kamavinga, Chico, and the Sias, these four guys, in my opinion, they have a good relationship on the pitch. Um, I'm not too sure if you have seen it, but um, these four guys have a good connection on the pitch. They work hard and they understand each other. So I think if you have that and you have Benzema with just uh, focusing on finishing and getting the chances in the back of the net, I think it's going to be much easier for him. And yes, he can just link up as well, but it's not like a big and a major necessity compared to if you have those other guys. So that's why I'm going to stick with him. But I would say that um, electric gas is um, more than just 10 minutes now. I think he should have at least 20 to 25 you know, um, let's see what he can do. But if he starts over Benzema, I'm not going to complain because I think, um, like we said, Benzema deserved the opportunity just to uh, um, just you know take like a week off or take some time on the bench. You know, just so that he can be fit for the Champions League matches. But like I said, you know, with the younger guys, we're playing with him. It's going to ease up his workload. So that's my reason for starting him on today. Yeah, um, we know that Betis is going to be a difficult game. Um, they have shipped quite a few goals recently, but it's nonetheless, you know, they pose such a, an attacking threat to us, you know, and they've posed such a threat to us in recent recent years. And they've really been a thorn in our side. So we need to win this game to keep up, you know, merely just seven points, keep that keep that gap. Um, and, you know, hope that Barcelona drop points against Valencia, which I don't think they will do because Valencia 
have been crap. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, we just got to hope um, and then move on. Just move on. We've got a rest week next week and just give it all in this match. And then let's move on to next week. Who we weren't, like you said, we're playing Espanol and then we're playing Liverpool. So, um, yeah, that is it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.